to my dungeon. Welcome to Cauldron Script. I'm your host, Master Cauldron. If you're new to the show, I use my 25 years of BDSM experience and 20 years working in the psychology field to dispel myths, get rid of stereotypes, and answer your questions about BDSM. You can call in at 865-268-4005 to leave your questions or visit the crypt at cauldronscrypt.com. On this episode of the crypt, Mayfair and I are going to be joined by show executive producer Jay Unicorn's Angel to have an in-depth conversation about safe words, using them to improve your scene quality, and the underutilized use of yellow, which that may in fact be a little redundant in that statement <laughs> all right well let's dive into some introductions of course hello mayfair hello cauldron how are you doing today i'm good how are you yeah, i'm peachy I'm down there in georgia you know we're peachy down there <laughs> but you're in tennessee now we're go big yeah. orange oh, oh, easy now <laughs> Let's not talk craziness. Let's not talk craziness. Ah, Junie. Hello. How are you? I'm great. You great? Let's hear a little yeah. bit about yourself. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit you with a few questions, and I forgot to tell you that I was going to do this, but that's okay. So uh, <laughs> how long have you been knowingly kinky? Um, knowingly, uh, close to four years at this close point. Close to four years. Okay. And a little participation, a lot of participation. Well, how would you rate your your current situation with the community at large? Um, it's daily um, with the community at large. My interaction is daily. It's part of my everyday life. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So this is and this is a topic, uh, of course, that. I have touched on many times, but never just done a full episode on it. And that's the importance of yellow really is what we're going to get into and why it's so important and why it's not talked about. And this is something that is very close to home for you. Is it not? Yes, it is. It's definitely oh. something that I've learned over the years and I wish more people knew more about it and how yeah. to use it. Excellent. All right. Well, let me hit those rules to love by. And then we will jump right into this topic. Uh, rule number one, safe, sane, consensual, and informed. Rule number two, kinky. That's K-N-K-I and comes from the kinky app available on all platforms. Maybe, but it's never been a sponsor. It stands for knowledge, no intolerance, kindness, and integrity. And rule number three, the quote from Mr. Paul Young. Submission is not about authority and it's not about obedience. It is all about relationships of love and respect. All right, safe words, how to use them to improve your scene life. Uh, when you come to me about this or mention this, I said, you write some some show notes or an outline or something for us to kind of go off of. I'll take a look at it, do, uh, do a little switcheroo and magic to it to make it fit my flow. And I didn't even have to do that because you know my flow so well as an executive producer. So... Let's start, before we, we get into your story and why this is so important to you, uh, what constitutes a good safe word? You're asking me. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, the, yes. the, 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 I think one of the universal, you know, house rules for any party, that kind of stuff is just red and yellow, easy. Um, lots of people between them who know each other really well, will have other words that mean something. Mm -hmm. um, so I think something that grabs attention, something that you're not going to use um, just in passing. Yeah. <laughs> Stop is not a good one. Usually. <laughs> <laughs> Though there are those that have been abused and that's typically the ones that will use standard words like no or stop as their actual safe word. So interesting little fun fact there. Um, Nikki, do you have anything? I'm sorry, Mayfair, do you have anything to add, subtract, uh, take away or divide to that? Uh, <laughs> I think it needs to be simple. Um, you see all of like the movies and TV shows that like joke about BDSM and 
they make their safe word like super califragilistic expialidocious or something and after having been in a scene i think it's important to stick to something simple um i think previous relationships i talked about having specific words um and france was one that uh my the guy that i talked to he wanted because he had this like story of why france would be surrendering and i was like that i'm not going to remember that in the heat of a moment yeah. i need something simple yeah. <laughs> let me not make a story when i'm like having you know some issues <laughs> so i think keeping it something like classic simple so you don't have to search your memory yeah yeah i i kind of agree with that i mean there are like you said a lot of memes and jokes about you know if she's screaming broccoli pineapple rutabaga she's probably forgotten the safe word yes <laughs> that's a scary idea though i can't imagine like trying to remember in the middle of something no thank you exactly yeah you know a lot of master slave dynamics don't use safe words they uh will beg for mercy so i find that as as something that is interesting i was watching the training of poe somebody one of the producers recommended that and yeah, i haven't even thought about that in i don't know four years or so that that's actually a thing um, you don't beg for someone to be merciful, but you beg for mercy. So that's very, uh, very interesting thing that a dynamic can add into it. But we're going to get into all that. Uh, of course, safe words, the common ones are red, yellow, and green. I don't know hardly anybody that's ever used green. Um, anytime I've checked in with somebody and said, where are you at? If they were green, they they would either give me a look like, come on, please, are you serious? <laughs> or or just say, I'm good, it's okay. And, uh, you know, which often will prompt me to go to a number uh, scale, either a 1 to 5 or a 1 to 10. Um, so safe words, the actual conversation about that is very simple, which is why we're going to brush through most of this. I think just about anybody that would be listening to this or watching us knows about safe words. Uh, so the next one, nonverbal safe words. What do we have to talk about there, uh, Junie? Well, for me, when I'm doing a negotiation, I always let the potential top know that I'm going to use yellow or red unless I happen to go nonverbal. And then we need to figure out some sort of movement that I'm going to do for you to understand what that means for me. And what what because, would one of the what would one of those movements look like? Well, I think um, you and I have just got the number system, like what you did. So I switched to that. I was using, you know, a four or that kind of thing, four or five or mm -hmm. three, just with my fingers. Um, I learned that from you, but I might like wave my hand down to the side or something, off to the side. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that's something I discuss because I want it to be something that they're going to recognize. Yeah. Yeah, that's... The, <laughs> and that communication is really what it's all about. And uh, on on talking about that, that using the one through five that you learned from me, I do have an article on FetLife talking about that or a link will be in the description down below and in the show notes for the podcast. It's coldernscript.com slash silent communication uh just run it together as one word there silent communication so uh mayfair yes sir what are some of the nonverbal safe words that you use um the number system i also if i'm very um adamant about my four or five i tend to slap the cross or whatever we're playing on or like adamantly wave both hands with the number um if i'm concerned you're not going to see it as fast as I want you to see it um, in my head because I tend to try to panic. Um, so that's, I pretty much just use the hand signals um, all the time because words are not happening during scenes. Yeah, I know. Words are hard. I know uh, one person that kind of keeps her hands together 
but then she'll clench them and move them out like that when it's getting really intense for her. And you slow it down or stop and give her a break, you know, start rubbing her back or something. And she'll bring her hands back together and then kind of take a deep breath. And her whole body will move up and then back down a little and just freeze. And uh, she's pretty much nonverbal. So, and she doesn't, she can't use the, the number system. Her mind will lock down and she can't use hand signals. So I was told, you know, the first time that I played with her, hey, this is what she does. And she didn't even know it, I don't think, but that was great communication uh, on everybody's part because, you know, she told me, hey, this is somebody that I play with all the time. They can probably tell you better than I can what I need uh, and when I need it. So talked to them, and we, the three of us sat down and kind of negotiated that. Uh, Johnny Farrell, this is... <laughs> Uh, this is taking the situation a little light, which I'm known to love to do. But he says that the perfect safe word is meatloaf. It literally means I will do anything for love, but I won't do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Shadowy Fox says the primal demo I went to years ago made it a point to mention the three taps, the tap out. Uh, yeah, that that is also a good one. Um, it's just anywhere on the body. Of course, I th I'm pretty sure I was at that same primal demo if that was back in 2017 with you. I know you were there, I believe. And, uh, yeah, it's because it's the, the, the primal scene and the primal play that they were talking about was like grappling uh, where you're down in the floor uh, wrestling. And, you know, sometimes you just you can't talk or you're in that primal headspace. But when things become too intense, learning to train yourself to just – Give three taps on the other person's body, anywhere that you can reach, and that will let them know that that you need a break. Uh, tapping out. Most people are familiar with that. So anything else on safe words or nonverbal safe words? Any thoughts? Pretty straightforward, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, Junie, we're going to get into your personal history and what led us into talking about this topic uh, a lot more in depth. I've I've sped things up to get past the the typical stuff. This is the interesting stuff. So uh, you put in here beginning not knowing how to yellow and not wanting to red. Expand on that a little bit. What are you talking about? Well, I think when I when I first started, um, I had a sir who was also new, but I didn't know how new he was, and so we just kind of jumped into things. Um, specifically impact. And I didn't know about yellow. I didn't know at all about yellow, but I knew that I didn't want to disappoint. And I think as pleasers, you know, we just, we, I took so much more than I should have um, for mental health, for my personal physical health and that kind of stuff. And so it was like, I liked it when it was really good, but when it wasn't, I just felt like I didn't have the tools to stop it. And, um, because I didn't want to disappoint him. Mm -hmm. So where did you, where did you go from there? I mean, this being brand new, learning, not knowing so many things that you needed to know as every new person is, uh, what, what led you into the learning about yellow, but still not wanting to red? Well, I think that, um, kind of going out and meeting people, it really was actually, there were two different subs who were um, service tops that taught me to yellow um, because I would talk about these experiences and they would say, well, why don't you use yellow? And I would say, I, that's a thing. Like, I didn't know how to do that. I don't know what to do with that. And so they were, they were both experienced subs. And so they're really the ones who taught me. Um, and so I, I'm so grateful to them for being willing to reach out and saying, Hey, here's how you do this. This is going to make a difference for you. And it absolutely did from that moment, from the moment I went into a scene, knowing that I had yellow in my back pocket, it changed everything. It made it less scary. It made me feel like I had more, a little bit more control. And, mm -hmm. and as I started to use it, I realized nobody was upset at me. 
it was just matter of fact. And I was able to really learn a lot. Now you said it, it made things not as scary. You had it in your back pocket. It made you feel better. Why, why, why does this one word do that? What does it, what exactly does yellow do for you in a scene? Yellow lets me, well, I use personally, I use yellow to either say, Hey, I need a minute. Check in with me. Like you talk about, um, I need a moment. I need a breath. I need you to change implements. I need you to get out of the same darn spot. I need, you know, it, it kind of gives me a little bit of power to say, Hey, let's check in. This is something I really need right now because I really don't want to end this. And I want to extend what I'm doing. Okay. There's a there's a conversation about yellow going on in the chat room right now that's kind of interesting. And uh, there are some people that use more than three colors. I know Master Arcane in his book, Igniting the Fire, uh, The Art of Romantic Submission, he talks about five colors, which instead of colors, I use the number system uh, with Mayfair. But this, and this is where people make it their own. Uh, the bonding experience, BDSM 101 uh, through Femdom Eyes says, and hello, Lady Katie. I've added orange because some say uh, red needing to stop and regroup for me as a top. I'm done at red. You've took me out of the headspace and put me in a take care of and calm mode. So orange lets me know. Uh, that they are so orange lets me know that they are at a stopping point but just need a moment and can continue and we're saying that that's what yellow actually is um, because johnny says lady k that's how i treat yellow so how do you treat yellow and um I just passed it here. It says yellow, uh, the bonding experience says yellow is slow down, but keep going. No need to check in and stop, but easier, please. Right. And I've actually had this conversation um, this past week and weekend with, with some friends. And I have some that, you know, for them, yellow means exactly, they're exactly where they want to be. Don't go any harder. Don't go any, but that's exactly where they want to be. No, that and would so, definitely be green. Right. For me, that, I mean, that's how I, uh, so I, but I think universally, a little bit more universally that it's, you're dealing in colors between yellow and red. And I think that, you know, I know some people that use blue for, Hey, I want more, or is that all you got? Or, I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to use it. But for me specifically, um, I like yellow as a check-in because it doesn't always mean slow down. It doesn't always mean, I need a minute. It might need, I just need you to change the implement, like change something and go right on or mm -hmm. don't use that implement on me anymore. Mm -hmm. So now I know that and, but I'm more prone to check in uh, mm -hmm. than a lot of people. Um, and it, part of that is the way that I do it. It tends not to throw anybody out of space. It doesn't take me out of space. Typically it doesn't take the sub out of space. Uh, which I guess you two could attest to that and tell me if I'm wrong, please. But um, if somebody is yellowing a lot or, you know, even a few times in a row, then I'm definitely going to check in. Uh, or someone is, is yellow and, and tapping across. However, my number four, which... One and two, one is, are you kidding me? Come on. Really? Two is, <clears throat> seriously? All right. Uh, I get it. You're trying to warm me up, but whatever. Three is that perfect level of play. That is where things are just awesome. So if I check in with somebody and they're, they're giving me a three, then I know. A four is that's on the intense side, but I can take it. And I like to to run that up and down. You know, a good scene should have, you know, mostly threes, some fours scattered in there, and then occasionally uh, maybe a five, which five is when it's too intense, 
But if you can skirt that line between a four and a five and ride that edge on those who enjoy that, uh, which I know, Junie, you're one of those people that enjoy that. <laughs> mm-hmm. I am. Um, that's a that's a very good thing. So it's it's a matter of knowing knowing the bottom, the bottom knowing the top, uh, and knowing the reaction. Um, if I'm if I'm getting a four or a five out of Mayfair, then I know it's just time to stop what I'm doing and and comfort. I'm not going to change toys. Uh, I'm going to step up and be skin to skin with her in some way, uh, maybe wrap around her or something, or just a comforting touch of something, and before I move on to anything at all. Uh, and if she does that, if she gives me a four a couple of times back to back with different things or whatever, I'm definitely going to check in with her. And I think that's a good general rule with anybody. I think even people who use yellow, and I don't disagree with with Johnny Farrell, Farrell, uh, or with uh, with Lady Katie of The Bonding Experience, which if you haven't checked them out, you need to. Uh, It's Lady Katie and Mistress Vega. Uh, It is a YouTube channel, so I'll put a link to it in the description below and in the podcast description for the audio-only folks. Uh, But I believe that they're both right because if you're having negotiation, this is one of the things that you're going to go over in your negotiation. And so Lady Katie's style, uh, that is what she's going to tell her her boys or (laughs) her girls that she's playing with, that she's topping. And uh, Johnny, that's that's what he's going to tell the people that he's topping, the women that he's topping. So I, I say it all the time, it's your BDSM, you make it what you want. Uh, I'm not here to dictate that, but I think that yellow, to get back to the main, the main topic, uh, we were talking about how you, how you learned it from some fellow uh, subs. I think this is very, very important. I've seen many scenes end way before they should because people were in a public play space and somebody said red and they were not ready and the DMs would not let them go back into the scene because they heard that magic word. So before we get into that and on that soapbox, Jenny, your experience goes a little further than learning to use yellow and and using it where does red come into play there (laughs) well like we said before i always i never wanted to red it was always you know it was kind of like always a tool that i knew i had in my toolbox but i hadn't used it before and i didn't want to use it because that pleaser part of me is like i don't want to stop what i'm doing i don't want to upset someone else and i Although I had you in my head, I've had so many people giving me knowledge about it. It was just a mental hurdle that I hadn't crossed yet. And so I was just recently, for the very first time, um, forced to read to end a scene. And it took took a lot of self-reflection to kind of move past that and to be able to understand that, okay, that really was just a mental hurdle. And now I'm okay, I'm okay. (laughs) (laughs) yeah i mean did the world end when you called red no (laughs) (laughs) were you told that you if you called red you were a bad girl no i wasn't told that but you felt beforehand that that's what it meant yes that is that is absolutely the truth that's how i felt so now that it's happened once Mm -hmm. Truly, so now, <laughs> truly deeply, how do you feel about it? Like nobody else is here. It's me and you on the telephone. We're we're having a conversation. And does this mean that next time you're going to maybe use it because you know it's not a it's not really a thing now? Like it, it just it's just something that it's just a word that you say that makes things all stop. Are you more yeah, apt to use it now? Well, that's exactly what happened. Like the very next time I seen, I used it. Um, And 
and it didn't end anything. It was kind of like, okay, I just knew when I'd had enough. When I'd had enough, I called it. And it was actually a really amazing moving experience to be able to just say, I'm done. <laughs> Cause I'd never been to that point before. I'd never been pushed to that point before where I felt the strength to say that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. And that's powerful. It was and powerful. Yeah. To me, that is someone owning their submission as well. And I know that that may sound weird, like, but you're talking about somebody uh, telling their top or their, their, dominant or master that they're done so how is that owning your submission that's owning it because the people that i top the the submissives all submissives that i've ever whether it was just for a scene or as a collared submissive such as mayfair m my wanting is for them to enjoy themselves and to push themselves but not to be broken. So by stopping it, Mayfair and Junicorn, by stopping it before you are past the point of it is okay, you are protecting a toy, <laughs> a favorite <laughs> toy. <laughs> and now don't, I don't want anybody to get confused. Uh, Junie is not my submissive, but we are play partners. We do, and we we love to play. Uh, at least this side of we certainly does. <laughs> so um, let me hit this comment that Johnny Fer Farrell made. My takeaway from today is that red, yellow, and green was not as universal as I thought it was and means different things to different people. Uh, yeah, it's, it's all generally the same thing, but everybody does have their own nuances. And that's why when it comes to negotiation, every single thing needs to be talked about. Uh, I stress that quite often. Um, what did Sword Out the Kink say? I find that having a scene that the goal is saying red with someone trusted is very cathartic and helps get over that mental hurdle. It may not be for everyone, but in my experience, it was very helpful. Yeah, uh, I agree with that. I don't know how I feel about it for newbies, um, unless it's somebody who's been in that dynamic for a while and and the top is, is more experienced than the bottom. Um, they need to be very experienced to push like that. Uh, other, but other than that, yeah, I think that, that that can be a very cathartic thing and uh, very, very motivating. Mayfair, you've been quiet for a long time. I know you're sitting there with lots to say. What do you have to chime in on here? Um, I think for me, uh, since I've, I've not been in the scene that long, uh, well, I guess it's longer than I really realized at this point. But anyway, <laughs> uh, 2017. Yeah. Is when we started, so it doesn't feel like it's been that long, but it feels like forever. I don't know. Um, but when I first started, having to call Red, having to stop it, it was a very, and it's still to this day sometimes when we don't get to scene very often, I don't want to stop it because I want to enjoy it, but for some reason my body hates me, and I'm like, I can't do it. Um, and there's a lot of, failure in my head that if I stop it, I've failed myself and I failed you. Mm -hmm. Um, that's where I've, I get hung up on and I've called red plenty of times. Uh, it still takes some reassurance for me from you that you're not disappointed in me, that you've not, you're not let, you know, I didn't let you down and you're proud of me for what we did. Uh, I know I tend to spiral. I'm not saying that that's a great way to be, but as a person with a lot of anxiety, that is something that I face often. Red makes me feel like I've failed still sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's important to note that, and, and <laughs> the bonding experience, Lady Katie, we're going to get into this in just a minute. I promise you that. Uh, and I will repost that comment for those who, who can't read at the speed of light. Um, but that reassurance 
anytime you have, you know, anytime there's a scene, of course, there needs to be aftercare as part of that scene. And then check-ins afterwards and possibly secondary aftercare from a secondary drop that can occur a week or so later. Uh, and that's a, that's a totally different subject that we'll hit on in another episode and that we've hit on in past episodes. But my point is, is that reassurance is so very important because uh, I'm not going to say all submissives, but most are pleasers of some kind. Uh, (laughs) I have met submissives that are absolutely not pleasers, which is a very interesting dichotomy um, that I may want to do an interview on in the future. But regardless of that, uh, that reassurance is very important. I mean, Mayfair has been around going on three years now. She's been a part of, uh, my life, part of the wife's life in one way or another, pretty much since she first started. And what she's saying is that still, even to this day, she needs some reassurance. And uh, Junie, I know you need, whether uh, for both of you, ladies whether it is uh a scene that has a natural flow and ending to it without any kinds of safe words or hand signals being given the whole time or it's something that ends in red or you read on uh, you know red on a certain toy uh which you know again yellow would be the better way to do that if it's just a toy and you still want to continue playing with something else, uh, you go with yellow, and that's the, the main point of this. Use yellow more, people, yellow. Um, but both of you, regardless of, of the scene, you you both need a lot of reassurance afterward, correct? Yes, sir. That's very true. So if you're in a situation where you don't get that, uh Mayfair, let's let's start with you first. What happens if you don't get that reassurance? I will spiral into the worst case scenario. I've disappointed you. I've let you down. And it will end with you hate me. And this has all just been a pretend thing in my head. <laughs> because that's how my head works. And, but, but what happens in your vanilla life? Does it affect it as well? Yeah, I get... Um, even when things are weird and we get strained, um, people can tell that I'm more stressed out and I'm a bit more bitchy at work. Sorry, hateful at work. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> we have whip cracks for the audio. It's okay. But I, I get very, very tense and very stressed out because I'm constantly thinking about what I could have done better. Why did I have to do that? How come I messed up? And I just get in this downward spiral of anxiety and depression and it's just it affects everything yeah yeah uh junie um i'm actually kind of the same way um if i don't get to have that reassurance then i'm questioning my skills as a bottom i'm questioning my submissiveness i'm not you know i'm not good enough people won't want to play with me because i don't just play with you i have other yeah, scene partners. So, mm. you know, but that all, it all builds on itself and it kind of pulls away. I won't, I'll just kind of pull away a little bit. I'm definitely crankier at work. Um, <laughs> I kind of just want to, I kind of just want to hole up in bed and not, you know, not interact with the rest of the world. And it's, you know, all it takes is just a, Hey, you did a really good job. And I'm back up again. Yeah. Like, Oh, it's good. You know, it just, a little bit of regular reassurance is, is the key to that. Yeah. And my, my point here is to show people that this is the norm for for submissives. And it really is. For, for nearly all submissives that I've ever met or will probably ever meet, this is the norm. Uh, there are those few exceptions. But I want to show how it's not just within the kink lifestyle that this applies, you know, it's not a switch that, that Mayfair or Junie can turn on or off. If that proper aftercare and that reassurance isn't given 
So it, it's a constant soapbox of mine. You guys know that. But what I'm talking about here is go ahead and pour your drink. Communication. <laughs> 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 All right. Um, so we were, we've been hitting back and forth on your personal history, Junie. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's, using that history and your experience, uh, the next line in here that you wrote or bullet point is using red in exactly the right place uh, and the world not ending. What do you mean by that? Well, it happened. It actually happened recently where, um, you know, I kind of pushed and pushed and pushed. There were some places I actually yellowed an implement. I, and I, because I wanted to go there. I wanted to go to that place. I needed to prove to myself that using red wasn't bad. Mm -hmm. I needed to prove it again. And I found that spot where it was, I, I think I said it was almost orgasmic where I found the spot where I was done and it was right before I coasted over the hill, just, I mean, right into my feelings and just started sobbing. Mm. And it was a, actually a really beautiful experience. And I was so proud of myself. So like I just, I caught that right moment. I don't, know if I've heard you say that you were proud of yourself from a scene before. Mm -hmm. It was that, a big deal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, and just that in itself, uh, shows how big of a deal that was. So, and if it hadn't been for the yellows, you never would have made it to the red. Absolutely. That is absolutely 100% the case. Um, Why do you think you feel like that, Subs? Uh, you're going to have to give a little bit more than that. When you are bottoming, are you submitting in service to the top? That's a good question. For me, I, um, depending on who the top is, depending on who the, how the, what the connection is, I could be. Um, sometimes I'm just bottoming but I can still have that feeling of wanting to please somebody and make them happy. And if I have to, you know, if I don't get reassurance after that, I've somebody has enjoyed topping me. Um, I'm still going to not feel um, good about myself. Well, it'd take an idiot to not enjoy topping you. They would, they would <laughs> be not knowing what they were doing. Um, <laughs> Mayfair, uh, same with you. Now, what, uh, Obviously, when when you're bottoming to me, that is, I'm not a service top, but you've kind of talked about it before. Is that submitting in service to me? Um, yes and no. I think um, part of it is a lot lately. Um, I haven't been able to get out of my head as much. Um, and I think maybe in part, I'm not as much of a masochist as I wanted to be when I first came in. Um, <laughs> and there's been that accepting it. Uh, but I have learned that if it is something that you need from me, uh, I can do that way better than when you ask me, do you want to do a scene? Mm -hmm. As opposed to if you just say Mayfair cross in your epic Dom voice, um epic huh wow yes uh <laughs> in those moments absolutely uh, but at the same time there are times i need it and it's 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 not about service to you it's just about i need that connection between you and i um but i i feel that anxiety and all of that and that need to please that's just that's me mm -hmm. um i'm like that at work i am i am a manager at work but I still want to make my people happy. The people who work for me, I feel like my job as their manager isn't to tell them what to do, but to make their job better. I feel it is my job to protect them and make sure that they have the best possible day they can, even if that means my day is absolute crap. That's just who I am. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and I, th I think that, uh, what, the last scene that we had actually got started in a 
video chat with the Patreon supporters on Discord, didn't it? Yes, sir. And it went really well because instead of it being that, hey, can we do this? How are you feeling? Because my skin is an issue. You started off using me as a demo bottom. So even if I wasn't mentally ready for that, I had to be ready to serve you because you are that kind of guy. You are the top who demos everything. And I wanted to be able to provide that bottom for you. Well, it was very important that people understand the five aspects of spanking. So <laughs> we did that. Was, they didn't get to the, see the spanking. That was knife play, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. It was knife yeah. play that led to, to an hour, hour and a half of spanking. Yes, so. we did not get to see the spanking. And we were um, sad Sorry. about that. <laughs> Sorry, Junie and Patreon producers. Um, and, you know, since I'm since I brought that up, uh, that is part of the, the benefits is an access to the discord group. So let me go ahead and thank master producer, Lily chaos, executive producer, shadowy Fox, unicorns, angel, Johnny Farrell, uh, Ray Webb and Haru Webb, senior producers, Matt Emerald Wolf, JK, that place in Oklahoma city. Thank you. Matter <clears throat> Roxy bear, baby love and sir, sir, mutual respect, master Gabriel, daddy, Steve, sir, Pan purple Pantera, Sort out the kinks, Stella, civil disobedience, grog for life, uh, Rafi, and author, Mistress Black Rose, producers, Kane Sin, Alexandria, Trouble 113, KJ, Ducky Monroe, uh, Alicia Ray, Hadia, Sir, and Kitten, Raven, and a brand new one, Raider 69 Time. <laughs> Junior producers K2SO, Jeremiah, Morgano 13, Not the Daddy, and Mac and Miller. All right. So thank you all. If you want to know how to become a Patreon producer, there are links everywhere for that. Just cauldronscript.com slash Patreon. So moving on, Mayfair, uh, talk about your intro to to safe words and how did you start to use them getting into the scene? And, and to be honest, I'm not, I'm not asking this out of my own memory. I really don't remember. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd, I'd read in a previous relationship, we had discussed safe words. As I said, he wanted it to be France, uh, which made no sense to me. He's like, yeah, because the French always surrender. Therefore, and I'm like, what? That makes no sense. I was like, I'll never remember that. Um, but between us, we talked for pretty much every day for a month about what a scene would be, what safe words are, um, what your expectations were, how it was going to be. Um, just all this kind of stuff. We went over and over and over the same information um, because I was new. I'd never experienced anything in real life. So we, we over discussed it, but it's, it wasn't like too much. You can never discuss something too much. Um, it's communication is the, the foundation for all of this. Um, and then that first time that we actually seen is when we discovered that my my lovely brilliance cannot word. Um, so we had discussed red and yellow, and then we had discussed hand signals, I think a little bit more, but in my head, I was going to be able to use red, yellow, or green, but I went completely nonverbal the very first scene we did. And in that scene, my hands were happened to be around a chair. Um, <laughs> So it wasn't like it was something that I could, I, we weren't prepared for my hand signals that first time. Um, but you, it was obviously the intro. So you were checking in with me all the time. Um, but you would ask me questions and all I could give you was a nod. I could not, I could not word. Yeah. No, I, I do remember that for sure. Yeah. That was in my living room on a very yes. uncomfortable chair. I had a bruise across my chest from that chair. <laughs> as well as on my my butt. And I'm pretty sure you've not sat in one of those since then. 
not like that. <laughs> not like that. Um, all right. Well, uh, anything, anything else to add to that? Mm. To what you're saying? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Well, I'm going to jump in and let me go back up here to, if I can find it. Um, here we go. Uh, the bonding experience. And this was a statement that I flashed on the screen earlier. And I said, well, I'm definitely, that's a lot of noise in the background. Somebody, um, it sounded like ice in a glass. I'm sorry. I thought it was muted. Uh, that's it all right. Show muted. All right. So, uh, yeah, this is something that's very, very important. I have really focused on this during previous episodes. Some, <coughs> excuse me. Some folks forget safe words are for the top two. If we happen to, uh, bad, hurt you because safe words aren't being used, it hurts us as tops. Knowing we hurt someone seriously and can damage our mindsets. Yes. Uh, subs, bottoms need to understand that if we hurt you to the point of harming you and you allow this to happen because you haven't communicated with us that this has happened, uh, that is way worse than calling red or calling yellow or in Lady Katie's uh, situation here. She's got uh, yellow, then orange, then red. Um use those safe words. It's very important. Also, uh, one place that I thought that this statement was going, because I just read the first part of it, was that we as tops can also use safe words. You know, we're in control. Using a safe word for us is often just ending the scene. Uh, when we feel that it needs to end, that's... But I have actually called red flat out on on a scene before um and you'll never ever ever guess why had to do with a brat <laughs> <laughs> somebody went too far bratted out um went way too be way too far beyond or beyond being see it just it tongue ties me to think about it because of how ticked i got uh, it was not fun. It was not playful. It was straight up disrespectful. And before I went too far and, and started playing out of anger instead of out of fun, I had to stop that scene. Um, I've often said, especially in season one, I've called red on a scene more times. Uh, I use, you know, 90% more times than subs have. Why? Because I'm in control and I don't have to call a safe word to end the scene, typically. But I have done it. You know, that, that ending the scene as the dom is calling a safe word. Uh, because we make that determination that, hey, this scene has has gotten to that good point or this scene is not going to get to the point where we had negotiated and agreed that we wanted it to go. And that's okay, but it's time for it to end. Um, so yeah, in talking about my own personal experience with them, I've, I've used them a lot. I've had a lot of people use them with me, yellow, red, purple, uh, blue, whatever, uh, broccoli. What was the last one that I heard? Um, that was different than the standard i don't oh god i don't remember what it was it was funny but it was i think it was go i don't remember it was something just short sweet but you'd think go what okay and if that's what you need to use and that's what she had used in a relationship for like 10 years so that's what she was used to and i'm okay if i hear that it's going to throw me off and yeah i'll i'll be able to use that so but that's my own personal experience with safe words. Now, how do I feel about submissives that use them? I trust them. I want to play with them more. 
because I can communicate with them. I can take them and they can take me to places that are so far beyond where you can go with somebody who doesn't use them, especially somebody uh, like Mayfair and Junie that uses those in-between safe words, uh, the yellow or in the bonding experience case, the orange, because as Lady Katie said, as a top, when we hear red, that flips a freaking switch in most of us, in most of our heads that just takes us completely out. And it's, it can be jarring for us. And that's not me saying don't use them submissives. Uh, it's just an adjustment for us, just like when you get pushed and, and say, uh, Mayfair or Junie, I'm doing Florentine flogging on you and I've been doing it for a while. And then all of a sudden I just snap one of those floggers and catch you with just the very tips of the tail and use the flogger like a whip and it stings you. So I've, I've gone from this thuddy catharsis type of, or cathartic type of flogging into this shocking stinging feeling that can throw you for a loop, right? Both of you. Uh, absolutely. Complete that right kind, of, <laughs> that kind yeah. of switch just completely throws me out of headspace. Like it, I can't handle the, the variations like that. I, it has to be a progressive thing. Yeah. Smooth transition. Yeah. So, and most of the time, uh, we don't just hear red straight off straight out of the, the gate. There's the scene is building. We know as a top, we know it's becoming rough uh, on the bottoms. We can read you. Hopefully the people that you play with can read you. So we know that it's building up. So it's not that jarring if you say red and really quite frankly, it doesn't matter how damn jarred the top gets. Uh, as I said earlier, it's part of you owning your submission, which um, baby love said something on that said, Oh, I love that cauldron owning your submission uh, goes back to, I have the power who I give my authority up to. And I think that's a good translation of that. And when it's time to, uh, to change it up and just because you call red doesn't mean that you're taking your authority back because you still have aftercare to, to uh, participate in and check-ins to participate in. Um, it just means that, that, you know, for that moment and that activity, that current impact part of the scene or whatever it may be, that is being taken back. Yeah. So, uh, I know there's been a lot of really good comments. Um, and I've missed a bunch of them. So I really thank you chat room. We're not wrapping it up just yet. We do have a, a little bit more time. Uh, different meanings of yellow. Uh, that's the, one of the last bullet points there. And Junie, you want to, you want to take us home with your last couple of things there? Sure. Well, we, I mean, we kind of talked about it already. Um, and, and, and I just want to say, understanding that everybody has their different scales of, you know, green, yellow, whatever your safe words are, whatever is the one for you that's kind of in the middle or means pay attention. That's how I'm using yellow. For me, when I say yellow, I might, like I said, need you to just change and implement. I don't want to stop. I don't want to stop the flow. I just need whatever you're using to stop being used in the way that you're using it. Um, I might just need to take three or four breaths without having anything happen. I might need a sip of water. I might need, um, need to get out of that one spot that you keep hitting me in. And I might need you to like move up to my back. Or... <laughs> right? What kind of lazy Dom would do the same damn spot thing? I don't know. Some sadist. Um, <laughs> But that, I mean, for me, that's what it means. And again, it doesn't matter to me how you use these, but just 
that communication word is the key. It is just, it makes everything so much better. Now, what did you, what did you mean? The last section you've got, uh, oh. different meanings of yellow extended mm -hmm. scene and pleasure, which mm -hmm. we understand that we've talked about that. If you can make a scene last longer than just mentally for most people, that's, that's going to also, uh, uh, increase the pleasure from it and the warm and fuzzies. Of course, safety, we all understand that, but it says good measure of testing for both top and bottom. Well, and I went back and rethought that. And so testing is not the right word for me. What I meant was building trust. And I think because what I learned from not using safe words, just like you were talking about before, I learned when I learned to yellow that using them was actually building on that trust. And one of the things I think as a bottom and a, one of the things I think is that everybody holds that the top or the, the dom has that responsibility. They have the responsibility. As somebody who's unattached bottom, I know that I have a large portion of responsibility for how my scene goes. And so me using safe words helps to take responsibility for those things and also to build that trust with whatever top that I'm playing with at the time. Mm -hmm. And they also have that trust in me then. So. Oh, I like that. I like that. And the, the responsibility part, we're talking about rack really risk aware, mm -hmm. consensual kink. Um, yeah. Because you, you know, you, you're very familiar with safe, sane, consensual. I always say safe, sane, consensual, and informed, which to me takes SSC to being rack, really, is what it does. But uh, rack does go a little bit further with that self-awareness. And I think that that's very empowering and very powerful and important for all who participate. And, yeah, you bring up an excellent point with that. I'm glad I made sure that we hit that because... Very often, and I'm a little reluctant to say this, of course, I'm not going to out anybody as to who I know that does this, but so often I have run across bottoms and submissives that put all the responsibility for their enjoyment of their experience into the hands of the dominant or the top. And that's just, no, not if you're going to refuse to... to communicate or well they just decide well you know i'm i have i have a and this is something that i hear them say quite often i have the heart of a slave <laughs> slaves communicate too <laughs> mm -hmm. um so that's you know if you have the heart of a slave and i'm not putting anybody down here i'm just trying to stress that this communication absolutely needs to happen uh, let me hit on a couple of comments and, and chat room. Please feel free to to throw your questions in there. Uh, Ray Webb says, is it common for someone to need to do extra checks when, when it feels like the responses are automatic? Basically, a sanity check to make sure that the person is still all there. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Is it common? Uh, probably not as common as it should be. I think Lily Chaos is talking about me here. I got a little frustrated once because someone, and again, I think that was me, was checking in every few seconds, and it wasn't bad that they were, but I was like, dang it, stop. I'll tell you when I need you to slow down or stop. Um, yeah, and... That's okay with, with me if that was me for you to feel that way because I was doing what I thought was safe. And I understand the frustration. In fact, the reason I think that that was me is because you pretty much yelled that at me one time. Not you at Calder, and it was last time I seen. Oh, well, it was, there was, uh, you did that in New Orleans too. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've had that experience though. Huh? I've had that same experience though. I mean, it definitely can, can kind of interrupt the flow. Yes. You want to be checked in on, but it's almost like if I'm just getting to the good parts and then you stop to check in on me, now I have to start over. So I think there's definitely, um, it's actually maybe an education on the part of the top to learn how to check in without interrupting that flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
And but when you're playing with somebody who's brand new and it's like the yes. second or third scene, and you want to make sure that you're being safe, then uh, because you know, you, you know, you've you've done your due diligence and you know their history and your history and how it right. all could mash up in a really violent way or a bad way. And, uh, yeah, I think that that's very important to do. Um, Mayfair, have I ever done that to you? Uh, not to the point where it threw me out. Uh, at the very beginning, I was very, still very afraid. Um, so the extra check-ins were good because I couldn't speak. Um, and I hadn't really quite found my my ability to ask for a check in on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you did a really good job of reading that about me and and following that. I never felt like it was excessive. Um, that's just oh, making me making me look good. I'll give you that reward later. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lady Katie says, uh, Lily Chaos. I feel for a lot of people in an impact scene it snaps them back into reality and overthinking versus letting go and hitting subspace that if you keep talking to them, they can't fully relax. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, but there are some times when you play with people, you don't want them to hit subspace. And I know that a bunch of bottoms and submissive just went, oh, you monster. Like I just said, cuddle deprivation or something to a little, <laughs> <laughs> but you know when somebody's just learning subspace may not necessarily be the place for them uh and that's something that nobody really talks about either um is keeping them into that learning phase and once all those chemicals hit and you shut down then you're no longer paying attention to what toys do what and it's not an educational process at that point it's just playtime. So, which is fine. I mean, at, again, it's your BDSM. You do it the way you feel is uh, is best. But uh, for me, when I'm doing education, I think that that's, that's an important thing is to not allow that headspace to take place um, right off the bat, especially. So I would like to touch on um, Junie's last bullet point for a second. Yeah. Uh, she mentioned as an... In, uh, unattached submissive it's good for her to build trust with her different partners different doms mm -hmm. um i think it should be stated that it's also really good to build experience to build that trust and to keep that trust up for people who are are collared or in a dynamic as well um it's probably obvious but if i just stopped using safe words you would feel that there's something going on or you would start to feel a lack of trust in me. Um, yeah. And that can erode our relationship. Um, so I think it's important that that's, even if you already have been with someone for 10 years, you still need to have that kind of keep using your safe words, keep calling those things out, keep doing that because it's only going to keep helping you stay strong. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point. Um, let me throw this up here. For two reasons, I'm nodding off is the name of this with a great little logo there. I don't know if this is a, a channel or who this is. I'm unfamiliar, but welcome to the live. Says, you monster, <laughs> quoting me. <laughs> Says, uh, but sometimes subspace isn't always the goal, even in a non-educational and non-punishment scenario. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. Uh and I should have done better at making that more clear. Um, there can be many, many, many reasons. If anybody's a police academy fan from way back in the 80s, uh, many reasons to have scenes and many different goals of a scene. So it, it's not always subspace. It's not always catharsis. It's not always uh, educational or punishment there are many reasons uh can you two think of any other goals for a scene to have here's on the spot come on I know. A bit. <laughs> um working on your your dexterity i don't know if that's the right word but 
working on being able to build your tolerance for different things like rope, for instance, it's not always about subspace. It's about learning those ties. It's about feeling comfortable in that awkward, strange, strange position. Mm -hmm. Well, Uh, they even, that had kind of fall under the education, uh, for part of it, but building your dexterity and building your, um, endurance would be more of a word that I believe you were going for there, but either is true. Uh, harm reduction, pushing limits, exposure, just to, just to list a few, Lily Chaos says. Practice is another for tops and bottoms. Uh, oh, uh, Cheshire Cat, hello. The Dom showing me they are seriously Dom and I should obey them. <laughs> Feels like might be punishment. Uh, <laughs> We're fine. Dom- or domineering and not dominant, no. But that, 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 but Cheshire Cat is a male sub, and that's a totally different thing than what we're talking about with female subs as well. Because, uh, and Lady Katie is a prime example of this. Her style, because of her life and her experience, and because it's a woman dealing with with male submissives or female submissives. But it's going to be totally different than my style. Um, it just is. And male and female, often I say, you know, gender doesn't really have a, an effect of a lot of things to me in life. I'm a little progressive like that. But as far as the style of the dominant, it actually has a lot to do with it. So don't hate me. I'm just pointing out what I have experienced in my life. Uh, upstate South Carolina couple. Hello. It's good to see you. Uh, they say sometimes I fight not, or she says sometimes I fight not to come during a scene so that it's more about daddy than me. When I don't come, I'm less likely to reach subspace. Nice. Thank you for sharing that. That is, that's a prime example of an interesting way to have a scene. Go ahead. I, I don't know that I'm in subspace when I'm when we do a cathartic scene. It's right. a different headspace, but I don't think it's what I would consider subspace. Um, for me, yeah, that cath- are cath- like a release. Sorry. Well, yeah, catharsis is different. It's totally different from subspace. So that is there is definitely a difference there. But in referencing the goals of the scene. Uh, all right. Any other questions? Oh, I'm nodding off. Domineering versus dominant is a whole different can of worms, but always a good conversation. Yeah, I believe back in season one, and we're on three now, uh, I did a a conversation or an episode uh, that was titled Domineering or Dominant versus Domineering, I think. I know that there was a huge conversation about it. That was one of the longer episodes any other questions? Well, let's go ahead and wrap up the uh, regular show. Uh, if you would, go to the website, cauldronscript.com. You can find links down below in the description or in the show notes. Don't forget to uh, hit that like button, smash the bell, or subscribe, or however YouTubers say to do that. Uh, we are going to continue with about 10, 20 more minutes of post-show, but this is going to wrap up the live actual podcast episode. Uh, So if you are not a Patreon subscriber or here for the live show, then you don't get to hear the post show. So links on how to do everything's in the description in the show notes. All right. That is going to do it. This has been, again, make sure you stick around for the post show, but this has been Master Cauldron. And Mayfair. And Junie. For CauldronScript.com, unearth the truth. <laughs> oh, I got to I have to know who you do. I know you. Uh, I'm nodding off. Do I know you? Uh, would you at least tell me that? 
<laughs> they say smash that like button and hit the bell like it's a naughty little fighting corner time. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Lilac Wine, uh, Junie, you have heard the preview of her writing mm. uh, that we're yes. going to talk about. She's going to join me on an episode. Uh, it's going to be pre recorded and only put out into the podcast feed. Uh, we're going to do that as soon as the two of us can get our schedules all lined up. Uh, so, yeah. I am looking forward to that because we've had one episode with her, uh, one of her writings on there that is called Can You Afford Them or Can You Afford Her that is just phenomenal. This is also another good uh, writing involving those free-range submissives. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, I love that expression, free-range submissives. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, lurking is fine. Yes, lurking is fine. We haven't met yet, but I've been lurking for a while. Well, Awesome. Thank you for lurking. I do appreciate it. As long as you're not out in my bushes. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a good thing. I tend to, you know, chop the bushes away. So, <laughs> All right. What other questions do we have here? Have y'all seen anything pop up in the, the chat room? So at 342, Lady Katie posted about new uh, male submissives. Um, oh, yeah, I saw that one. I wanted to bring that up. Good point. Go ahead. Uh, new male submissives are the worst for not using safe words. They've got the idea, I'm a man and I need to be tough. Uh, and I have to tell them it's for me and you and has nothing to do with strength. It's all about safety for both of us. Yeah. Very, very good point. Um, I used to run into that a lot. I used to top a lot more men than what I do now. So there's, there's only a few that I that I top now and none of them have a problem using safe words, but it's, I know when I, when I first got started way back in the day, 25 years ago, get off my lawn. <laughs> uh, doing the, the switch thing. I, of course, back then safe words, I mean, yeah, it was a thing, but not really a thing. <laughs> so, I, yeah, no. I definitely would have been on Lady Katie's shit list. Um, because it would have been something that, I mean, she, she couldn't break me. Uh, nobody could. I just, I'd pretty much allow you to kill me before I would, you know fight my way out of the scene and with the people that i played with that's pretty much how you got out if you wanted out you literally would have to fight your way out of it god things have changed you young kids in the bdsm just don't know <laughs> <laughs> uh, any, go ahead I said i think i like this change yeah yeah i'm telling you though i still miss miss the leash laws <laughs> Cheshire cat's like, oh God, there he goes again. <laughs> uh, I, bonding experience. Lady Katie said, um, had asked, how do you handle that with the new subs, the male subs? And Lady Katie responded by saying, I stress it in negotiation and explain what the words truly mean to use them. That is necessary. And that is in all caps because it is necessary for it to be in all caps that they use them. Also tell them if I feel they aren't, I will stop because of both of our safety. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, Lady Katie, have you ever actually just stopped because someone wouldn't communicate in a scene? Uh, Ray Webb says, is it common for someone to need to do extra checks when it feels like the responses are automatic? I already hit that one during the regular show. Anything else y'all have seen from the chat room or anything you want to throw out there and talk about? This is the post show, so it doesn't actually have to be part of the topic. We're pretty much uh, free range to talk about what we want here <laughs> in the post show. It's La Rose is talking about free range. Huh? That's Silla Rose is talking 
about free range in the comments. Uh, uh, I've never heard that before. Free range submissives. Yeah. Well, go ahead and uh, you you use that too. Go ahead and talk about it there, uh, Junior. I do. I do. For me, I actually um, it was a title handed to me by one of my friends in the Nashville community, um, who was the original, <laughs> but in our area, the free range, and um, it. For me, it's just been an empowering thing. I'm not attached. I'm uncollared. I'm not claimed. Um, but I, but I kind of claim myself, and so I get to have the experiences and I get to make the decisions. But it also means that it's on me to be responsible for my safety and my negotiation skills and my ability to use safe words. Yeah, you, you're like a. a I'm gonna. I swear, I need to buy you like a a little chicky like an easter chick uh, mm -hmm. onesie or something because i could so see you out like free range chicken kind of clucking on it's got to be cute well, good. talking about lilac like rose i've i've talked about self-coloring myself quite a bit and actually i've asked two different makers about ma making some sort of pendant either with chicken feet um imprinted or a chicken or something on it as the wow. pendant oh that's awesome Somebody's got a lot of background noise coming through. Uh, I'm nodding off, says, shh, not the bushes, the trees. Well, I do a lot of woodworking, so there's not many trees around uh, right now. <laughs> I've got to plant some. <laughs> uh, yeah, that whole self-collaring thing, uh, th that was... Uh, a really interesting episode that we did, and I can't wait to get it put out into the feed as well. Uh, Lilac Wine at Celia, Free Range Submissive is one that is without an owner, Dom, etc. just to put it just very simply. And she says, oh, I see. Awesome. So any other questions, comments? Lily Chaos had to dip out. She said she'll see us at the Munch. Uh, that much is for patrons only. Uh, it is done on Zoom. You can find the link on Patreon. Uh, so you can jump in there if you've never been in there before, uh, patrons. That is for all levels of support. So from a dollar to $4,000, whatever you care to give. We we do need a four, a two or a $4,000 uh, giver at this point really bad. So Go ahead and jump in there if you roll that deep. <laughs> well put. <laughs> well put. <laughs> and then I'll be doing daily episodes. <laughs> yeah, if that was to take place. So, All right. Uh, anything else? Anything either of you want to just, just riff on for a while? I'm good. Thanks for sharing. That's been fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mayfair, I think that was directed at you. It was both of you. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, our little round table here. Uh, dang it, wrong dungeon. LOL. What about thoughts on erotic hypnosis as an aspect of a scene? Uh, yeah, mind control, erotic hypnosis, the power of suggestion, uh, Pavlov's dogs. Uh, any kind of training like that is all kind of related to each other, uh, in my personal opinion, from, from my understanding of it. I actually published an episode on that, and I don't really have too much of a thought on it, to be honest. And I know that may be a little weird, but um, I don't, and it's because I don't have a, I've got a lot of experience with, with mind play, with fuckery with uh fear play all the good fun stuff like that but as far as actually the the kinky hypnosis type stuff uh let me see if i can pull it up it's uh season two episode 35 hypnosis and communication with trevor where he goes into some detail about his personal experience and learning uh about it and pretty much anything that I had to say there is just about everything that I would have to say on the topic. I'll see if it will let me a, post post a link to it in the show notes. That was a DomCon interview, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, Trevor was the one. He was kind of dressed like a chauffeur. Yes, Only with the was, white gloves. Yeah, and carrying a riding crop, and there was a lot that went into that. There's, he put a, and he explains it too. He puts a whole lot of thought into the psychology and the mystery behind what he's wearing because it's a whole lot of things at first glance looks like it's one thing, but you pick it apart, and it's totally something else. It's pretty freaking cool. Uh. So yeah, I do recommend that. It, it's it's one of those interviews that can be a little bit slow, uh, but the information in it's really cool. And I I think it let me put the link in the chat. I'm not sure. It shows it on my side, but I don't know if it did it for everybody. I can see it. Okay, cool. All right. Well, if nobody's got anything, I haven't seen any new questions come in, no new comments. A uh, few people have dropped off, so... It looks like the show is telling me that it wants to end itself right about here. It called red. Yeah. The show, <laughs> called, the show called red. I think when Lily said that she was out, she'd see us at the munch at five. That was the show calling yellow there. Slow <laughs> it down. Slow it down. Let's change it up. Now it's just going to call red. <laughs> That's okay. We'll be back next week. That's right. Same, uh, same bat time, same bat channel. You can find us at cauldronscrypt.com or at uh, YouTube or cauldronscrypt.com slash YouTube for the lives every Sunday at 3 p.m. Oh, here comes a thing. John Shaw, when your sub is a people pleaser, how does she call red when she goes nonverbal? Because all she wants to do is please. I'm just going to sit back and mm -hmm. let you two have that. I think that this is based on, this is where that's based on communication and trust and the understanding that red isn't bad and that conversation that you have with them and that, you know, calling red if it's needed is going to be a trust builder with you and make you happier. Um, and she's going to do that by whatever signal that you decide ahead of time that is her signal to get. Mayfair, thoughts? So... That is me. I don't know who he's actually describing, but truly, he's describing me in a nutshell. Mm -hmm. um, and it took you really explaining. It does. It pleases you for me to call red. The only way I could please you, if I felt the need to be at a red and I didn't say it, I'm displeasing you at that point. So to please you, I have to be honest with myself. And with you, and if I'm at a red, I have to say red because that's otherwise I'm breaking your trust and I am displeasing you. So you took it from red is ending it as to calling red when I feel it is what you expect out of me, is what you need for me. And that is how I can make you happy. Um, and I do it non verbally by my fives and, and beating on the cross or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I'm pretty, pretty clear when I'm ready to stop, I, I believe. <laughs> yeah, John, there's, there's ways that you can bring that communication in without it being verbal. It just takes some training. I mean, Mayfair was not capable in the beginning of just throwing a hand signal up there. Uh it took me working with her and a lot. Do you remember that where I would just, you know, lean in. I wouldn't wait for you to give me a hand signal. I would ask for one. Yes, sir. And the psychology behind the hand signals or any form of silent communication is that it can allow somebody uh, to be, be in the habit and be in the moment of doing that, but not lose the mindset of subspace or something. Uh, it takes more mental capacity to use that verbal communication. So that's why that silent communication from a psychological standpoint is a good thing. So just work with the sub, uh, work with her and really make her understand if, if she's got any kind of little or baby girl in her, I don't know what your dynamic is, you can uh, work with her to help her understand, you know, uh, littles and baby girls when it's a, a daddy dom baby girl 
uh, dynamic, they really like the explanation that, hey, this is, if you call red, this is not the ending of the scene. This is the beginning of the aftercare where we get to cuddle. And you know how much daddy likes to cuddle with you. And we can get your stuffy and your blankie, uh, your passy, whatever the case may be, whatever things that they use. And, you know, that brings in the cuddle part. So you just have to present it to them in a way that they understand it. And, oh, she is a baby girl. Cool. So you just have to present it to them in that psychological way that they understand that it's not a bad thing, that it's a good thing, and that it's okay and that it does please you. Um, they have to know that it pleases you or they will continue to fight against that. Um uh, and, and it's the not, displeasing, huh? It it displeases you for you to ignore it. That was a big key for me. If I don't call it when I need it, I am displeasing you. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I I realize that goes hand in hand, but the the verbiage mattered to me. Yeah, no. Yeah. Words are very important there. It's it's you know if you aren't doing this, then you're you're actually allowing me to abuse you effectively is what's going on and that's not what I want to do so uh let's if you get to that point then tell me and then we can have cuddles and some water <laughs> and you get your stuffy and your blankie and then everybody just goes away and we can just chill for a little while and then usually they're, you know, they're cool. In fact, stubborn or super, super daddy pleasing baby girls are actually the easiest ones to, to uh, get them to understand how important it is because of that aspect. The hardest ones are just those stubborn ones. Oh, you're breaking up. Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. They, oh, you're it's that you're not going to break me mentality. So, <laughs> <clears throat> yes, Junie. I was going to say, as a as a pleaser, the way that I look at all of those things that are things that might feel selfish to me on one side, the way that I figure out how to make them make sense for myself is to always flip it and think about it from a top's perspective, from a dom's perspective. What is it that they are actually getting if I do these things that feel selfish to me, but I'm actually doing something for them. And that makes it okay in my head, if that's helpful at all. Oh, very. Yeah, that makes it, if you have the ability to, to try to walk the other person's side of the slash for just a second, I think that that would help a lot. Uh, oh. Uh, Atelia Rose says, I'd love to learn more about fear play and mind fucks and other mental games. Uh, we can definitely do that. Uh, not on this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, I think that we've done one a sort, uh, sort out the kinks and I have, have recorded, uh, the first part of an episode that was talking about, uh, our personal fear play and um, uh, then it, it just, we, we got really intense with it and really deep. And I think both of us got kind of into the moment and we had to stop it. Uh, so we will <laughs> revisit that as soon as we can and put that episode out. Uh, upstate South Carolina a couple says my favorite blankie for aftercare is the, the Santa blankie that you guys gave me I get that and daddy when I'm done oh thank you that's awesome yeah we were uh in a store May I think Mayfair and I and saw this and it's like oh my god we know who would love this somebody with a Santa Claus fetish <laughs> yes which really? I think oh, is awesome that, that's did you see the, the comment above also? That's funny. Uh, from I'm Nodding Off says, not sure yes. if Cauldron is mimicking my daddy voice just now or <laughs> if I've been channeling Cauldron the past 10 years. 
<laughs> oh, I'll take that as a compliment. I just want to point out, as you were doing that, I was grabbing Junie and I was looking for my binky because that's not fair when you do stuff like that. <laughs> Did Sorry, you? I didn't mean to put any littles in the little space. I was just trying to be descriptive as possible. <laughs> <laughs> uh, EMR, welcome. Look at your beautiful face on your picture. Oh, I hope you're doing well. Been meaning to message you just to say hi. Uh, but I guess in this case thoughts don't really matter it's actions that count but hi <laughs> sort out the kinks where'd that comment go uh yeah stubbornness is very hard to overcome with that i never want to break but i've learned i need to let go and when you let go that's usually that's the point of catharsis that's where that's where it all happens um the last time uh sort out the kinks and i played uh, she actually started fighting back against me, and I kept pushing to the point where she couldn't fight anymore. I was holding her, and it was that moment of surrender where she gave into the submission uh, that she found her empowerment. She found her strength and was able to have a release. So thank you so much for that. God, that was, it's always a moment when that happens. Um, let's see. I'm nodding off. Speaking of fear play and mind fucks, if you do a new episode on those, would you consider adding your thoughts on flags, the forked tongue? Uh, I'll have to get some information on that. Let me write that down. Because... That actually may be something new for me. I mean, I know what a fork to tongue is, but flags the fork to tongue. I'm assuming that that's a book or something. Have you? Have either of you heard of that? I have not heard of it, but I've got it pulled up on Amazon. So it is. It's not wanting to let me see the description. Uh, okay. Um, okay. The book is not comforting. This book is not comforting. It does not reassure. It does not teach anything a decent person needs to know. It is. I had a pop up window. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it is a book about BDSM, but it will teach you nothing about tying knots, swinging a flogger, or spanking. It does not attempt to reach the vanilla public. This book addresses control, it addresses change recreational use of humiliation, conditioning, psychological torture, hypnosis, and interrogation techniques are explored and laid bare, broken into the un into usable steps and understandable, applicable concepts. Yeah, uh, I do know that book, actually, and it was released uh, by someone else and under a different name. Uh, there was, because I've... I've got that on Audible, and it's the exact same book. It's just a different different author and different name. Um, but yes, I will talk about that. Man, it's that. Whoo, it's good. I had to listen to it in settings, uh, several different settings. Usually, I just consume a book uh, in one setting, but. I broke that one down and took some notes. So, yes, we I will get into talking about that. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, that's going to do it uh, for the post show. Thank you again. Everybody had some new faces, some familiar faces that had never popped in before. Uh, again, EMR, uh, Ken Hawk, thank you so much for coming in. Um, that means a lot to me that you popped in here. She was a uh, night or 2018, 2019 international uh, title holder. So for the world of leather. So the PO, I believe POC title holder, um, but just a phenomenally outstanding person. And one of the funniest people that I've ever met in my life. <laughs> 
I hope I get to see you soon. All right. Anyway, uh, Mayfair, thank you as always. Junie, I can't thank you enough for coming in, for, for putting this together. I do International Person of Leather 2019. There we go. Uh, uh, that was EMR. So, but anyway, Junie, thank you so much. Um, any final thoughts that you want to throw out? Um, with that, I, I did, I made a note. I just, it's so important to me because I learned that yellow, when I was using yellow, I was creating trust, building my own communication skills and broadening my experience and potential future. So I just, I personally want people to take it and run. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, Mayfair, your final thoughts? Touching on uh, what Emerald Wolf had said earlier, uh, remember the KISS method when you're making these things? Keep it simple, sweetie. That's not what she said, but <laughs> you don't want to overcomplicate your safe words. And remember, it's okay to use them. Absolutely. Absolutely. John Shaw says, uh, see you all next week. Now, now to go shopping, I have the red hoodie. I need season two. Yeah, those are available at coldernscript.com slash tpublic. Just to throw one more last little commercial out there. <laughs> <laughs> My final thoughts is uh, as a top, as a dominant, as a master, I enjoy seeing with people who know how to communicate. This is one of the most important forms of communication. Uh, I push for people to use those hand signals. Tell me three, tell me four, tell me five, tell me the truth, damn it. That's all I want. Um, and if, but if you use the four or the yellow or in Lady Katie's case, the orange, if you use those effectively, we won't have to get to the red. We can ride that wave up and down and in and out and take it to a much more beautiful place than if you allow me to keep going with something that is uncomfortable for you to the point of it's throwing you out of headspace. It's breaking your will to continue. It's breaking your body. Communicate, communicate, communicate for any of those playing the drinking game at home that's three shots that you got to take in a row right there and i'm going to end it there you're welcome <laughs> so that's going to wrap us up uh say bye everybody bye <laughs>